Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. We are back for another car stuff video. We're diving right back into the Altima. We're going to be working on the interior again today. Don't have a fully set plan this time like I did last time, but we're just going to jump right into it. I'm thinking probably the first thing I'll do is finish taking off all this stuff because in the last video, if you watched it, Al said, hey, can I take this terrible wrap off of the inside of your car? And then she took off one piece and the rest are all still still there. So we'll go ahead and take off the rest of that first. And then looking inside, I think I might try and figure out how to take these pillars off next. Because as you can see, I did paint the other ones black already, but these ones are still tan. And so is the sun visor. So I got to take those off. And then, I don't know, I probably will redo the ones that are already black because I, like I said, I just now, I spray painted them, so it's not the best way to have done that. I think I should have dyed them or something, but yeah, we'll, we'll have to figure that out. Either way, first things first, let's get this wrap off. Okay, it turns out I actually did do a little bit better of a job on installing this or doing this. I don't know if you consider this an install, but I did a better job at it than I thought I did, so it's making it kind of hard to get out because it's uh, shoved underneath there. So I'm going to have to take these pieces out in order to get around the edges. I don't know if I'll have to do it with that or not, but definitely with the pieces in the door. Got my handy dandy screwdriver. Thankfully it's just this one screw that holds this in along with like a couple clips, but it's usually pretty easy to pop out and also I don't think I'll need to take it all the way out anyway. So let's just get this screw out of here and keep moving. Um, I'll let you know since you couldn't be here to receive it. Uh, I did make fun of you already because in the last video you said, can I take all this stuff off? And then you took one off and that was it. I just meant on that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well I'm just letting you know I made fun of you at the start of this video. I know, this is on video that people are seeing that I am telling you that I made fun of you where you couldn't defend yourself. One piece down, just gotta put the screw back in, pop it back in place, and then we'll do the other ones, but obviously don't need to record that, so let's go ahead and get those other ones off. Oh, and obviously the contact paper left like a sticky residue, but we'll worry about cleaning that off when we do everything. We're gonna do it all at the same time, so whatever's dirty, I'm just leaving dirty. If it's messed up, whatever, it's fine. We'll get it all at a, at, one collective point. <laughs> so I opened up this back door to uh, to do this one back here and while well, the seat is sticking a little far ooh, yeah that's not good. So that's a bit of a bummer. Un unexpected uh, another thing to add to the list of stuff that I'm gonna have to fix but uh, I mean we're already gonna be tearing apart the whole car anyway so I guess now's the time to fuck up more stuff. All right, we are officially back to our original form and I did move the seats a little bit so that hopefully that little hole back there won't get any worse. And I do want to note that the whole reason of me doing that, the contact paper on everything was to get a test for what it would look like. And so with that said, obviously I took it off for now because it was contact paper, not vinyl. But uh, the reason we chose to do contact paper originally was because contact paper is a lot more cheap than vinyl and I wasn't sure if I was going to like it or not. So after a rough little test, I do really like it and we are eventually going to get vinyl and redo it because just the like wood grain doesn't match with anything. And in the trunk, which I can't really show you right now because again the battery is dead and opening up my trunk without the battery alive means I would have to go grab the keys and I don't want to do that. So. But basically, the trunk matches that wood grain that I had on the contact paper. So eventually we're going to find a vinyl and redo the vinyl, or redo these pieces with the vinyl that matches the stuff in the trunk. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, you'll see when we eventually do it. <laughs> okay, unfortunately it's starting to get a little too dark outside to, to really be able to show you much here. My camera is not having a good time. But the next thing that we're going to do is, oh, there we go. I just had to hold it in a weird way. Next thing we're going to do is take off those two screws right there and that's all that's holding this in right now because uh, when we did the headliner we took a lot of the roof pieces out like I don't even have a visor on the passenger side like I literally threw it away so 
Uh, it's just these two screws. Normally there's another piece that holds the visor in over there. We don't even have that anymore either. Uh, so yeah, nice and easy to take that off now. Okay, visor is out, and again, that'll get dyed when everything else does. So for now, since it's not getting dyed yet, we're just gonna toss it into the back of the car with all the other stuff. Next up is a part I've kind of been dreading, which is trying to figure out how to get these off. So as you can see, they're still tan, unlike most of the other things in the car that we painted black last time. Uh, and the reason is because when we did do the headliner and everything, we couldn't figure out how to get these off. We literally just peeled the headliner out from underneath it and we couldn't figure out how to get these off. So like just a couple seconds here of like messing around, I can see that this looks like it just kind of peels off. Uh, obviously it looks like I'm gonna have to get this piece off first, this bottom black piece, and then I gotta get this off. So uh, we're gonna have to do like a little game of, of chasing other things, you know, like the main thing that we want to get off is this, but we're going to have to then take this off, which means we got to take that, you know, it's a whole, whole game that we got to play. So I guess also I know I got to take the seatbelts out because, uh, well, as you can see, the seatbelt is covered in mold. So yeah, this whole thing's got to come out and we got to deep clean that. So I guess we'll start there. We'll start with getting this bottom piece out and see where that gets us. <laughs> okay, I ended up deciding to work on the passenger side first. And again, lighting isn't my friend right now, but uh, I got the seatbelt bottom undone. And I was like, okay, cool. Now I can start pulling this piece off. And then I realized very quickly that, remember that game I was just talking about that I have to play where I follow stuff uh, and then something else needs to be undone first while well, we're playing that game again because now this needs to get undone before this piece can come off before this piece can come off before You get the idea. Okay, the good news this piece didn't end up having to come all the way off Obviously, I just had to peel it up a little bit and now we've got this Free at least a little bit now. We'll open the back door and see What we're looking at from this end and unfortunately, this is where this idea of stacking stuff in the back kind of bites me in the butt is because now I'm going to have a hard time kind of working back here because I don't have a lot of space as you can see. <laughs> but now we'll peel this one up and then, okay, I'm not going to be able to peel it up with one hand, but we'll peel up this one and then that should be able to pull this whole piece off. I'm sorry if you can hear uh, Al sanding in the background. She's working on her side skirts for the JZX90 here, but She's doing her own thing. So everybody's kind of doing their own thing. We got the Supra out, working on that as well. So lots of stuff going on. But anyways, getting back to my project. Uh, looks like if I just follow this all the way up, again, not gonna be able to do it with one hand, I don't think, but if I follow this all the way up, I should be able to just peel this thing off. It looks like it's just clips and stuff. Got the piece off, and as you can see, yes, it was just a bunch of clips. And now we have run into a new issue, so uh, looking at the tan piece here, it looks like this is actually held in by something else, not some sort of clip that just like comes off. That looks more of like a permanent thing. So I guess we're just gonna have to break that? I, I don't know. And I, I will also preface by saying that I have looked up videos on how to do this and I can't find anything. So I'm just winging all of this. And again, at this point, the car I'm gonna kind of walk away a little bit. Hopefully I'm far enough away from the sanding. The car is messed up enough at this point that I'm kind of okay with being the guinea pig here. Uh, again, it is kind of a bummer that nobody else has done this before so that I can't just like watch somebody else do it and then just copy them, you know? But I guess so be it. <laughs> Okay, I am very much running out of light here, so I'm using my phone flashlight, and my phone's almost dead, but here's what I've discovered. So, I did get that little clip out, actually. Oh, man, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Okay, hang on. I think that's enough light. Yeah, that's enough light. So, I did just pull on this, and that actually just pulled this clip right out, so that's not necessarily like a permanent clip like I thought it was. Um, I also discovered that the actual seatbelt, like, retractor thing, or whatever you want to call it, uh, that one bolt that I took out from here held in part of the retractor, so as you can kind of see, maybe it starts to pull out. 
and then this bolt above it is the only other thing that holds that in, so that's almost free. I'm really not sure how to get this piece off, so I'll have to do a little bit more research to see if I can figure out how to actually get this part off, or maybe once I get the rest of this off it'll be obvious, I'm really not sure. So since it's too dark for me to work on the interior of the car, because I can't see anything, you guys can't see anything, and that's no fun for either of us. Everybody else is working on projects that are outdoors. Um, so Alice, like I showed you earlier, working on some side skirts, and then uh, Meg and Kyle are both going to Stance Wars tomorrow, so they're working on that. I don't know entirely what's going on here. It looks like Meg is cleaning her wheels, and Meg's then... deep cleaning her wheels. Okay, there we go. Got my answer. And then Kyle's working on something in the engine bay of the, the Supra. The carbon fiber. Carbon fiber. Carbon, carbon fiber. Wait, what did you say I was doing? So working on your side skirts because earlier I was talking and you started sanding your side skirts so I was yeah. like I was like hey well I don't know if you'll be able to hear me very well because Al's sanding her side skirts but and so yeah I wasn't telling people about my body kit yet you butthole <laughs> I mean I feel like it's inevitable that if I'm recording a video Whatever you don't want to be in the video, you shouldn't. She's though. she's moved on. She's on to something else. <laughs> what? Plus the car. Nothing. Can we get go, ice cream? Go ahead. Go go back to your car. And sorry, your body kit is now everybody I, knows about. I was just joking. I posted it on Instagram a while ago, I remember? When we were still at the old house. Oh. You know what I'm listening to? I'm a Bobby girl. Just kidding. <laughs> I, yeah, that was the song you uh, did the musical chairs to. Oh, that's kind of hot. <laughs> Spicy. It's gonna go right there, and then we got the centerpiece. Ooh, more carbon fiber. Is it real carbon fiber? Um, for the price I paid, I sure hope so. <laughs> I can tell from the back it is real. I was gonna say, that definitely looks pretty real to me. You hit the car. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. I'm of course, the last piece. But what? No, that that's supposed to look like that. Put a McDouble there. Set. All set. <laughs> it is now definitely too dark for me to record anything outside, so I'm going to pick the camera back up next time. See you guys then. It is now a new day. It's only been obviously a few seconds for you guys, but it's been a few weeks for me, so I don't exactly remember what the last thing I recorded was, so I apologize if I repeat some stuff, but we did just disconnect the battery, so... Now, we don't have to worry about uh, these airbags, these like passenger side airbags going off while I'm taking this apart. And I did also look up how to take this apart and have discovered a few things. So, um, first off, we're still going to try and get this uh, taken off, uh, this top piece here. I think I figured it out. Um, last time I'm pretty sure I recorded this, but I got this piece out. Now I'm just going to kind of work its way up to the top here and then pop this piece out and then um, I still have not figured out how this comes off. I found a few videos, none of them are car specific, so because they're not car specific, uh, the cars that I found don't actually have the seatbelt set up the same way that my car is. So that is the only part that I'm gonna have to figure out on my own. The lighting in here obviously is not great, but it was even worse when I was facing the other direction, the side that I had already been working on. So I've decided I'm gonna work on this side instead since you can actually kind of see what I'm doing. This, like when I face the other direction, this, it literally just looks black and it's obviously not. So we're gonna catch up to where we were on the other side and then pick back up from there. Okay, we have made it to the same point that we were at on the other side, so now I'm basically just going to start pulling at this and hope for the best. <laughs> uh, hope that I don't destroy my airbag or the car or anything like that. But I wish, really wish I could figure out how to go about handling this piece. Because I really don't know how this is held in. And I can't seem to find anything on the internet about it. So, because this all seems actually like it is loose, 
and would come off if the seat belt wasn't in the way. Kind of wonder if maybe I spin it. <laughs> I just spin this piece until it comes off, which I would need to undo this bottom piece to, to do that. So I guess I'll get the bottom piece off first and we'll go from there. To get the rest of the seat belt moving freely, we just gotta take that one little bolt off there. Now we have a new problem. This is a little power related thing that goes to the seat belt. So as you can see, oh, sorry, big, sh big shake in the camera. Uh, it is now free except for that. And this is not a clip that I have ever seen before. I thought maybe I just pressed that little piece on the top, but that doesn't seem to be doing anything. And it like, it doesn't, I don't think it unclips from the bottom. Like these two pieces don't come apart. It unclips from here. Like it has to pull out from this. I don't want to break it obviously because I assume it's important, but I don't know what to do here. So I might have to do more research. Multiple discoveries have been made and hopefully this will actually be a lot easier than I thought. So that, this little black tab here apparently pops out and then that's how you get the rest of this off. So I don't, I'm gonna have to sit here and try that and I'm not gonna be able to record it obviously because it's so hard to focus on that. But either way, that's how that comes off. And then this is actually what I have the panel popper for. You apparently just pry underneath this. Again, I'm not really gonna be able to do it while recording. Uh, but you pry underneath this, this little piece pops off and then the bolt is underneath this to take the seat belt the rest of the way off. So shouldn't be too difficult. In fact, I can pull it off with just my fingers apparently. Maybe. Yep, look at that. All right, so there's one thing done. Now I gotta figure out though if I can get this off. Mine actually was a little different than the video that I had watched and it was actually a lot easier. So uh, you can kind of see it, but I basically just stuck my finger under this little bottom piece here and then just pulled up and it literally pulled right out from the uh, port. So that was actually super, super easy. And important to note, this is for your airbags. This is in relation to your airbags. So uh, obviously I disconnected the battery, like I said, anyways. But if, you hadn't, if you're planning to do something like this and have not disconnected your airbags, or, or sorry, disconnect your battery, and once you've disconnected your battery, you gotta wait a couple minutes before you take it apart or else your airbags will go off. So, obviously that would not be ideal. Don't do that. <laughs> okay, back to our regularly scheduled program of getting this thing off. Let's hope this is the same size, yes. Oh, I almost fell. <laughs> Got it loose though, so that's what matters to me. One minute, 37 seconds later. I forget how long these bolts are. These bolts are so ridiculous. I mean, like, it's not ridiculous. It totally makes sense, but it's annoying. <laughs> Nonetheless. Got it. All right, so now the rest of this should just pop right off. I hope. Maybe not. Whoops. All right, hopefully I didn't screw that up too bad. I think I gotta pop this piece off. I thought that was the airbag this whole time. It doesn't appear, peering behind, doesn't seem like it is. No, it is not, it's another screw. Okay, lessons are being learned. Anybody that's done something like this before is looking at me like, dude, you were such an idiot. But hey, that's why we do this is that I can learn and show you my mistakes so that, that way, if you have not done it before, you don't have to look like an idiot. Sweet. Look at that. Piece is off and, as always, I'm gonna put this right back in its spot. So I guess, where's the airbag then? Oh, is it down here? I don't know. Somebody knows where the airbag in a side airbag car is. Please tell me. Oh, I guess it's up here. What? But then... I'm so confused. I don't understand airbags. 
besides the point, I guess. We got this thing off, now we gotta do the other side. I have gotten the pieces on both sides fully removed, as you can see. But next up, this piece does show, uh, which means that I need to take this off, because again, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I've mentioned this already, but I'm gonna dye all this black. So, this also needs to be black. So, I think to get this piece off, I have to take off this whole bracket. So that's what I'm doing right now, and I'm only doing it on one side for now to figure out if that actually does help me get that off. Okay, I actually don't think that this piece comes off. Because if you look at it, this little piece here doesn't look like that's something that comes off. And then, if you actually take a look, uh, oh, I pushed it up too far. Dang. Okay, well, hang on just a second. Well, this is at the bottom, like so. You can see that that little plastic, that the tan right there, goes all the way around and underneath. Um, so I don't think that that even comes off either. I don't know, it might, but either way, this is more so my worry is the top piece. I don't think this top bit comes out, but I guess that just means we'll have to paint it on the actual bracket, which really isn't too big of a deal because everything else on this bracket is covered. So if it looks terrible and is painted all gross, not really going to make a difference. So we'll probably just paint it on here. And then also, I don't know if you can kind of see it there, but there was a big like spider's nest that had been made in this piece here. And there's the dead spider that apparently did it. So I guess this was just his final resting place. It was, he, his body was underneath this little metal, like, uh, spring thing here. I don't know why I can't think of a word, but either way, he was hanging out underneath that. And now he is very dead. And he was dead when I found him. So, I don't know how long he's been there, but that was his final resting place. So, R.I.P. Mr. Spider. And that is the progress that I wanted to make for the day. So that is where we're going to wrap up. Again, we got all this out. So that is pretty much the last of the tan stuff in the car, aside from this weather stripping. But uh, obviously, I don't want to take that out because then there's not a very good seal for the car. And as we have seen from the last video, uh, there's a bunch of ants and other bugs crawling in here. And apparently, bugs are getting in here anyway. But I don't want to make it any easier for them. So. That'll be what we'll take out when it's time to actually start dyeing and painting stuff. <laughs> and that's it for the for the tan stuff in the car. So pretty cool to like see it without really any tan in it. And again, I didn't even know I'd be able to get the like seatbelt and all that out. I, I didn't know what how big of a product project that would be and it ended up not being too bad. But I will stop rambling now. Thank you so much for watching, especially if you made it this far. If you haven't already and you do enjoy the content, please make sure to subscribe. Also, comment down below. Uh, I think there's a couple things throughout this video that I said comment and let me know about. So if yeah, you have any ideas or help that you can offer me, it's always appreciated. Or if you just have any feedback, I appreciate that as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.